Hello friends, uh, let us start with a new topic and uh, we have already seen the different crystal system, crystal structures okay? and one of the way of finding out that which is the crystal structure in a particular material or what is the crystal structure, then that is X-ray diffraction is the technique to find out that what crystal structure is present in the material. So, in today's topic, we will see what do we mean by diffraction, okay? how I can use X-ray diffraction to know that what type of crystal structure is present. Of course, we will take example of uh, uh, only cubic materials okay, uh, till uh, for now, because usually all our metallic materials either have cubic structures or hexagonal structures, okay, most of them are cubic structures. So, we will not go into lot of details of how you can find out the intensities, X-ray intensities after diffraction of different material. We will just concentrate on that how this intensities, the diffraction intensities are affected by the crystal structure and how from X-ray diffraction pattern. I can find out the information about the crystal structure. So, uh, the uh, two uh, son and uh, uh, father team of William L. Bragg and William H. Bragg in 1913, they used this concept of uh, spacing between two parallel planes, okay, which is called D spacing. Okay. They used that to mathematically determine an equation okay, which tells us that what, what at what angle the diffraction is going to take place. Okay. So, if you have x-rays, you have d-spacing between two parallel planes and using that you will be able to find out that what at what angle the diffraction is going to take place. And for that they got Nobel Prize. Okay. And uh, I can use this x-ray diffraction technique. Okay, uh, to identify the crystal structure, as I have, I have already told you, and which is uh, which is the topic of today's lecture. You can also calculate the lattice parameter of a material, okay, or of a unit cell. You can measure stresses in the material, okay, the residual stresses uh, when you do any metal working or you do welding, for example. There are large number of stresses which are present in the material, okay. So, you can find out or you can do uh, some estimate of these stresses which are present in the material using X-ray diffraction. And you can also measure a what we call as crystallographic texture. Okay. That is one of the characterization technique of the material okay, by which we know that what is the preferred orientation in the in your material. Okay. But we are not going to do all these three things, we will be just concentrating on the crystal structure part for now. Before coming to the diffraction part, okay, let us just see what are the properties of X-rays. Okay. Before that, uh, there is some uh, uh, nice trivia about X-rays that how they were discovered. So, William Conrad Ronjen accidentally discovered these rays in 1895. Okay, he was doing some uh, experiment and he took first X-ray photograph of his wife. Okay, so, you can see in the bottom picture, okay, you can see all the bone structure of a, her hand okay. and in fact, you can also see the, the ring which she was wearing. Okay, so, these are all bone structures and the ring is there on uh, her middle finger. In fact, people were using uh, the there was so much euphoria about this new type of rays that there were X-ray studios at one point of time and people were going there and taking photograph of their hand or any body part okay, just to know that, uh, that there was some curiosity about these rays and they were just going uh, for fun and taking photographs. Okay. So, that was the craze when it was uh, discovered. Some technical aspects of X-rays, okay, the range of wavelength, uh, this is also an electromagnetic radiation 
and the wavelength is in the range of 0.5 to 2.5 angstrom depending upon which X-rays you are using. It also has a dual nature as any other electromagnetic radiation, okay. it can give you a wave, it also shows a wave nature okay, where wavelength can be related to the frequency with uh, velocity of light okay. or it can have a particle nature where it you can give a quanta of energy to the X-ray photon okay, which is again related to the frequency with Planck's constant. Okay, the value of Planck constant is all, constant is also given here, and you can combine both. Okay, the particle nature and wave nature, and you can now relate the wavelength with the energy. So if you see this equation here, if my wavelength is small, the energy of the that particular electromagnetic radiation will be very high, and that is why visible light cannot go through our body for example, if we have any problem in our bone, if we have a fracture, we go to the x-ray machine, they take a photograph and find out okay, there may be a hairline fracture or something like that. Okay. So that means it transmits through our body. Okay. So they, these x-rays must be having very high energy so that they are, they are able to go through the human body. Okay. Visible light cannot do that. Okay. So, the reason for that is that because the wavelength of X-rays are very small, they have very high energy. As you can see, there is a reciprocal relationship between the two. So, if you keep on decreasing the wavelength, the energy of the that particular electromagnetic radiation will keep on increasing. Okay. Now, let us come uh, after knowing something about X-rays that these are electromagnetic radiation of very low wavelength. Okay. How people thought of using X-rays for understanding something which is at atomic scale? Okay. The idea came from uh, I, I think you must have done some physics experiment using uh, diffraction gratings, okay, where you we use visible light and there is a ruled grating, and there you see this uh, high uh, more light, darker region, again lighter region, and so on and that is the actually a effect of the diffraction. Okay. Another good example of uh, if you want to understand diffraction is that when you use any radio okay, and suppose uh, our windows always have some kind of uh, grill in that okay, and this radio also has a radio some electromagnetic radiation. So, some waves are coming. Okay, your radio is receiving those waves and you are listening to some beautiful song. So, when it goes through this grating, this electromagnetic radiation, now you uh, please understand that radio waves are having very high wavelength, well, the wavelength is very large as compared to X-ray, okay, it is in meters or centimeters. Okay. So, when it is going through this grating in our window, it also gets diffracted because this is also a electromagnetic radiation, it is going through some grating or some uh, regularly spaced uh, object. Okay. And because of the diffraction, you will see that your radio receives signals at some places it receives very high signal, okay. at some places it does not receive very good signal. Okay. The, the quality of the reception changes if you roam around in your house. Okay, and that is the effect of diffraction actually. Okay. So, already people knew before X-rays were discovered that in visible light if you take ruled grating, so that is ruled grating means that is a regularly spaced scattering object is there. Okay. So, then wave this particular wave the visible light will have this diffraction effect okay. and somewhere you will see a more light somewhere you will see a darker region that means less light is there. So, that means some some diffraction effect is taking place. Okay. So, when X-rays was were discovered then the another German physicist von Law, he reasoned that atoms in the crystals are also arranged in a regular pattern. Okay. They have as we have already, already seen in lattice that there is a translation symmetry 
So these are regularly spaced arrangement of atoms and of course the distance between them is in angstrom some some in the some value of in angstroms x rays also are uh, electromagnetic radiation which is in angstrom so if uh, my this x ray waves interact with this regularly spaced atoms okay there must be some effect uh, like diffraction should happen okay so he reasoned that you can use x rays to do a diffraction study in crystals okay and by that we will be able to know a lot of details about the crystal okay a very nice uh, idea okay and from that the bragg uh, th that is a actually a father son team was there okay they were doing experiments and they thought about this diffraction experiments and they actually give it a very nice mathematical equation to understand the whole uh, diffraction phenomena okay and th this is what they thought about it okay so before coming to that uh, the diffraction effect let's see what do we mean by different type of interference when you are uh, dealing with uh, electromagnetic waves okay so this is what we call as constructive and destructive interference so this is one wave okay with a wavelength of lambda here okay and it has an amplitude a there is another wave okay which also has uh, an amplitude here sorry another wave maybe i'll show it on this uh, i think it is going too fast there okay so this is one wave okay wave 1 i am calling it as wave 1 and suppose there is another wave here which i am calling as wave 2 okay and in this case suppose their wavelength is same okay and uh, in this case they are in phase okay you can see that their minima and maxima are matching with each other so they are in phase so when you have this condition of in phase okay the resultant wave will be if this is my amplitude a for both the waves because of they are of similar type okay then the resultant wave will have an amplitude of a plus a which is equal to 2a okay so when you have in phase interaction or interference between two waves then we have a constructive interference and you will have a magnitude which is summation of both the amplitudes okay but we if we have a third wave okay but now it is not in phase okay so let's say this is our third wave here so now i am calling it as wave 3 okay and now this is not in phase okay and uh, where the maxima is coming let's say we have minima here okay and then it is going like this so it is completely out of phase okay it is at 180 degree phase difference with, with, with the first one okay so where the maxima is here you are seeing minima so it is cancelling out where the minima is here it is maxima here and again it cancels out okay so now the resultant wave will be having amplitude of a minus a and which is actually zero so it is having a destructive interference okay in this case it is out of phase so diffraction takes place when the two waves are in phase okay or they what we call we they have constructive interference okay then only you will have diffraction okay so this is what is summarized here the differences in the length of path travel lead to differences in phase and the introduction of phase dif difference produces a change in amplitude okay so this is what uh, now we know that x rays have uh, wavelength which is in atomic range or uh, atomic scale okay uh, some angstrom the distance between the regularly spaced atom in crystals 
they are also in that range angstroms so some few exons of angstrom less than 5 angstrom usually we also know that when x rays interact with each other and if they are in phase then you have a constructive interference if they are out of phase they have destructive interference okay so now using all this knowledge okay we can understand that how the diffraction happen in a at uh, in a crystal okay using x rays okay so that is what is shown here uh, these are atoms in a one in a particular plane okay regularly spaced atoms okay so now we know that the atoms uh, are regularly the in the crystal atoms are arranged in regular uh, pattern okay and this distance between the atoms in uh, is in angstrom range uh, usually less than 5 angstrom the x rays okay th their wavelength is also in angstrom range okay as we have seen and when these two will interact there is going to be some diffraction okay and the diffraction is due to when the two waves interact okay they can interact in a constructive manner okay in which case the resultant wave will have uh, amplitude of both the waves okay addition of both the waves or if they are interacting in a destructive fashion okay they will cancel the, the intensity or amplitude of each other okay so the diffraction uh, the diffraction phenomena is due to in constructive interference of two waves okay or multiple waves okay and that is what is explained by the bragg condition of diffraction okay that how the x rays are interacting with the crystallographic planes okay and how when you will get the constructive interference okay that the, the condition was given by the bragg law okay so now uh, there is one uh, schematic here okay you have the crystal planes here and the atoms are regularly arranged here in crystal planes okay now suppose there are two parallel rays one and two which are falling on this particular crystal okay at an angle theta it is making an angle theta with the crystal planes okay so let's see these two waves are coming and it got scattered from this atom another ray coming and it got scattered from this atom okay so now if you see these two parallel rays which were in phase before they interacted with the atoms okay so if you see the distance which they have traveled okay up to this particular plane okay which is shown by op here they have traveled a common distance okay the distance traveled by these two wave is same so if they are in phase they will remain in phase up to this particular plane which is given by op okay if they remain out of, uh, in phase after oq okay then you will have a constructive interference okay so when it will have a constructive interference if the distance traveled between p and q is some integer integer multiple of the wavelength okay so constructive interference will be there okay when you have the phase difference as okay either as 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 lambda and so on so basically the integer multiple of lambdas will give you constructive interference okay if my sec this this distance which is traveled by this second wave in p and q okay if that is equal to integer multiple of lambda okay then the whatever ray which is coming as 2 prime here okay that will also remain in phase with the 1 prime which is which is scattered from the this top atom okay so if this is so if i want to do a simple mathematics here okay so first ray is coming like this and going like this the second ray which is parallel to this in phase okay uh, is 
let's take the hand so that is going like this okay and we have drawn a perpendicular on this second ray from this point two perpendiculars and we are saying that if this extra distance traveled by the second ray okay from here to here okay if it is some integer multiple of lambda then you will have constructive interference okay and we know this angle is theta which is the ray is making with the crystal planes okay so if you do a simple trigonometry you will know that this angle is going also going to be theta okay and if this angle is theta i have to find out this particular distance here okay and which is going to be this theta angle and this is uh, angle 90 degree here okay so if this is 90 degree th this is going to be uh, sin theta okay so i have two sin thetas one which is here another one is here so sin theta plus sin theta will give you two sin theta so if you do the this simple trigonometry okay then i will say that the break law will be given by n lambda is equal to 2 d sin theta okay so this distance is going to be d sin theta and d sin theta which is 2 d sin theta and as we have said that it should be integer multiple of lambda this extra distance which has been traveled so that i am saying is equal to n lambda where n is equal to any integer okay so this is my essential condition for diffraction okay and this simple equation was given by this uh, the team of uh, father and son okay and w h bragg and w l bragg and they got nobel prize for giving this particular equation here okay so once i know that what is the angle theta okay and what is the wavelength of x ray then i can calculate what will be the d spacing okay so when you do a x ray diffraction experiment okay you get what we call as this x axis is the two theta angles okay and the y axis is, is the intensity okay so it is intensity versus two theta angle so from two theta angle we will get angle theta so between the angle theta and wavelength as we saw in the previous case so if i know the lambda and i know theta then i can find out what will be the d spacing okay and from d spacing okay i will be able to tell that which are the crystallographic planes which are taking part in the diffraction okay a uh, one simple diffraction pattern is given here for aluminum okay and the planes which are taking part in the diffraction is also given here okay and at what angle they are going to diffract that is also given here okay and uh, but please remember that this axis is, is in 2 theta okay so all this intensities and what planes are taking part in diffraction these are given okay now how i can use this particular information to find out about crystal structure okay for that we need to know that in a particular crystal structure okay which particular planes are going to take part in diffraction okay and which are not going to take part in diffraction okay so for example in case of if we take different bravais lattice here okay so you have simple okay it can be cubic it can be any other uh, from any other crystal system you can have base centered okay again it can be cubic okay Uh, sorry it can be any other crystal system you can have body centered which can be cubic or uh, from any other crystal system or you can have face centered okay so we are not specifying here that uh, whether this is from a cubic crystal system or from any other system okay what we are saying that if it is body centered okay it may come in any particular crystal system or if it is face centered okay it can be also in any crystal system okay if it is so 
then these are the rules for getting the reflection from a particular plane okay for example in case of simple uh, bravais lattice all planes are going to take part in diffraction okay so there will not be any plane which is not taking part in the diffraction okay if you take a base centered crystal okay you will have reflection from h and k okay only when they are unmixed okay so now what do we mean by unmixed unmixed means when you talk about the crystal planes we say hkl planes okay so if h and k both are even okay then they are suppose h and k both are even then this is unmixed both are even or odd in both the case it is will be unmixed okay if one of them is even and one of them is odd okay if from out of h and k in this particular case right now if one of them is even and another is odd then this is the condition what we call as mixed okay so in case of base centered if h and k are unmixed you will have reflection will be there that means you will get a diffraction peak if h and k are mixed okay that means one is even one other is odd then there will not be any reflection okay if we come to body centered if h plus k plus l is even then you will have reflection if h plus k plus l is odd then the reflection will be absent okay in case of face centered if h k and l are unmixed okay again all has to be even or all has to be odd okay for example what do we mean by all even all odd let's say h k l in case of uh, this face centered fcc okay if i have one 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 plane okay that means this is unmixed all the planes are odd okay so this is unmixed if i have suppose let's say 002 then it is also unmixed please remember the uh, the zero here is going to be even okay whereas suppose i take a plane like this 211 this is a mixed plane okay so i will not going to get, have any x ray diffraction peak okay from this particular plane in case of fcc okay but in these cases i will have a reflection okay now you can again see uh, what i showed you in the previous slide okay this is for aluminum the diffraction peaks for aluminum you have diffraction peak from 111 plane which is unmixed all hkl plane uh, values are odd you have diffraction peak from 200 plane okay so all are even you have diffraction peak from 220 okay again all are even you have diffraction peak from 311 okay again all the hkl values are odd okay that means that you will get diffraction from a face centered uh, any bravais lattice okay only when you have unmixed hkl planes okay in case of mixed one you will not get so this is how you can take help of the diffraction pattern to identify that what type of crystal system is there or what type of bravais lattice is there okay using the information from the x ray diffraction peak okay so this is what is uh, given in a tabular form actually i have not uh, covered in this how it is derived because then we have to go into lot of details about that how x ray interact with atoms okay and how uh, their phase uh, shift is there because of the interaction 
okay, how the scattering takes place. Okay, so, th that is kind of a more involved uh, understanding for a very advanced course in characterization if uh, one take a co course in characterization, but for this particular course, okay, this much understanding is enough that uh, we can use this X-ray diffraction studies to find out the information about the crystal system. Okay. So, thank you.